I want to give you my best. Thank you, Jesus. I want to wave my hands in the sanctuary. I want to be a living testimony that it is no secret what God can do. Second Corinthians at chapter number 12. Commencing in verse number 7 through verse 10. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Will I rather glory in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Thank you. Maybe so. And I am weak. Then am I strong. When I am weak. Then am I strong? I want to talk a minute about sitting at the table of brokenness. A little girl found a cocoon and she placed it in a jar in her bedroom because she knew that eventually out of it would come a butterfly. And so she saw that butterfly struggling in a little opening in that cocoon trying to get out. 
and she made a larger hole to help the butterfly in her thinking get out of its cocoon. And rather than its wings being beautiful and flighty, the wings were drooping, stuck to its body, and it was doomed to a life walking rather than flying. Because in her youthful innocence, she could not know that it was the struggle to get out of the cocoon that made the butterfly strong. It's struggle. It's crisis. It's bad news. It's sickness. It's distress. It's getting tired. It's trying to put one foot in front of the other with the wind in your face. It's the struggle in life that strengthens you to make you strong. For there are some things in life that God is determined that he will not fix until you go through the crucible of suffering. I wish I had a witness. I, I, I'm not talking about being shattered. Because there's a difference between being shattered and being broken. Divorce will shatter you. But you can get married again. Losing your job can shatter you. But you can get employed again. Being shattered means you can get fixed. But to be broken means God's got to humble you. I, I got on my knees at the end of December. And I asked God for strength. We're getting ready to build this new church. And uh, I, I want to finish teaching in the book of the Revelation so we can get to this evangelism piece where, where our church will just explode. I just see God doing marvelous things through the explosive growth that's growing on, going on here at Lily Grove. And I ask God to just keep my body strong. Give me what I need to, to lead in this effort. Keep me strong. Give me grace. Give me your favor. Put your hands on me. Then I might lead your people. But he gave me a brain tumor. I didn't ask for that. I asked for grace. I asked for his hand to be on my life. I asked for strength to lead my church in this effort. I asked him to give me more power this year than he gave me last year. But he gave me a brain tumor. New Year's Eve, I was preparing to preach. And I got so sick. I thought I was having a stroke. I thought I was going to die. I don't know what dying feels like, but it was anything like what I felt. I got my sister to get me to the hospital. 
And when I got to the hospital, I, I would have been satisfied with a stroke. As, as crazy as that sounds, that's the diagnosis I was looking for because I, I could handle changing my diet and taking medication and, and relaxing. I, I could handle that diagnosis. But the emergency room physician sat on the side of my bed and said to me, rather matter-of-factly, you have a brain tumor. It's a pituitary macroadenoma. It's, uh, it has worn out the bone at the base of your brain. Uh, it has, for all intents and purposes, he said, ruined your endocrine function. Your hormone function has been ruined and uh, the doctor, the neurosurgeons and neuro-ophthalmologists will be able to tell you more later, but I think you will have to be on medication for the rest of your life. And he looked at me and I looked at him and he said, did you understand what I said? I said, yes, I understood perfectly what you said. He said, well, you don't have any reaction, it seems. I said, well, I thank you for your diagnosis. But, but I need to talk to somebody else. And like Hezekiah, I turned my face to the wall. And I said, Lord, I've been preaching your gospel since I was 18 years old. I've been telling your story, sharing my witness, singing my song, preaching my prayer. How am I going to do that now in this sick condition? And the word came to me. Lest I should be exalted above me. Through the abundance of the things God has already done for me to keep my feet on the ground, to draw me even closer to him, he gave me something that I got to depend on him now more than I ever had. Because if I let you do all you got planned to do without me, you're going to take glory that does not belong to you. So to keep you humble, to break you, to, to, to mold you, to shape you, to keep you where I want you, I've got to make you dependent on me. Because mama's not there, daddy's not there, brothers and sisters will come to visit, but late in the midnight hour, you will need somebody whose grace is sufficient. Now I want you to, I want you to understand there's a hurry how Paul shares the depth of the dilemma that he's in. Because he uses the word thorn and buffet. Thorn. It's not a prick from a rose bush. It's a wooden stake that impales you that every now and then it chugs you impales you and then he uses the word buffet which means to be struck with a blow constantly I want to talk to somebody here this morning who's being buffeted, who has had a thorn. 
who has been through your own crisis or you're going through it right now. Nice little anecdotes. Sweet little church sayings won't see you through. I wish I had some noise here. A whole lot of people who mean well have said to me, you got the same thing I got. No, I don't. Because it's in my head. And it ought not be there. But since it's got there, it didn't catch God by surprise. Now listen, it may have been carried to me by Satan, but it was conceived by God. Because God won't let anything happen to his child that catches him off guard. Now if you haven't been through anything, you sleep right through this message. But if you've been through your own storms, if you've had your own thorn jug in you, every time you thought you were getting around a corner, it jugs you again. Every time you thought you were feeling better, it jugs you again. Every time you thought you stopped crying, it jugs you again. Anybody here? I said, anybody here ever had your own thorn in the flesh? The loss of a child, the loss of a mother, sickness in your body, whatever your thorn is, I've got good news for you. Paul said, I went to the Lord like I went to the Lord. And asked him to remove it. I asked the Lord. I, I can't preach like I want. This, this endocrine system and this, this hormone replacement therapy that I'm on. I, I get hot flashes. I, I, I quit laughing at women over 50. It wakes me up at night. And then I, I eat things I like, but it doesn't taste the same. Activities that I enjoy, my energy level is depleted. God, I can't do what you want me to do in this condition. The doctors have, are giving me medication and hopefully, prayerfully, it will shrink the tumor. But I'll have to stay on the medication the rest of my life to keep it from coming back. And I will have to wear a medic alert bracelet because I am deficient in a hormone called cortisol. And if I'm unconscious and wind up in an emergency room, you cannot tell by looking at me that I'm suffering from this condition and doctors will not know that I need this medication so I need a medic alert bracelet to remind me that I'm still under the doctor's care. I'm deficient in a hormone that I need. And so I need a reminder that I got a weakness. If, if I don't know who I am, if I lose reasoning and consciousness, I need a reminder that I have a deficiency. Can I take that up a little higher? Every now and then, God has to put me in my place 
to remind me that I got a deficiency that without him I can do nothing. I went to the Lord and I asked him to remove it. But like Paul, I hear him saying, Terry, my grace is sufficient. My grace is enough. I know in your weakened condition, you are not enough. You want to know something, Terry? Before you got in this condition, you were not enough. I just kind of let you think you had it going on. I just kind of let you believe that you were doing all that preaching on your own and passing that church on your own. I let you believe that you were enough, but now you know that all I got to do is move my hand and everything that you call yourself will come to nothing. My grace will make up for your insufficiency. Because my strength can only be made perfect in your weakness. Oh, I wish I had time to preach on it. And so, gladly therefore, Will I rather glory in my infirmity so that in my weakened condition the power of God may rest upon me. You're going to help me close this, won't you? I wish I could holler right here. Oh, I wish I could holler right here. But in my weakened condition I've got to depend on his grace. I thought I was. I thought I was doing pretty good. I thought I was a strong Christian. I thought I was a faithful believer. But God said, I'm about to show you something. You ain't seen nothing yet. You thought you was preaching the last 21 years. Wait until I get you where I want you. You really thought you were pastoring Lily Grove? Let me show you something. You're not going to be able to make a step unless I walk with you. You're not going to be able to stand and preach unless I stand up in you. It's going to be my power that they see and not yours. And when they shout, it won't be on your preaching. It will be because my grace... His grace woke me up this morning. His grace started me on my way. His grace is standing me up right now. His grace will keep me all the year long. And so when I turn my face to the wall, like Hezekiah, I said, Lord, I don't know how many years you're going to give me. However long, however short my time here, I want to give you my best hallelujah. I want to give you my best thank you, Jesus. I want to wave my hands in the sanctuary. I want to be a living testimony that it is no secret what God can do. You're going to help me close this, won't you? I went to the doctor this past Monday 
and I stayed there just about all day. They brought me from one room to another room. And I was getting nervous because the doctor, the neuro-ophthalmologist, was concerned about my eyesight. The tumor is pressing on my optic nerve. And it has pushed the nerve up so far that it's hard for them to see it even on the MRI. And the doctors kept going back and forth, talking to one another, but not saying anything to me. I called my sister in Alaska, and she could tell that I was nervous about what was going on. She called Gwen Tate, who works over at ND Anderson. And Gwen Tate came out of her office, left all of her work, and came and sat with me in my doctor's appointment. The doctor came back again and said, I got to look at one more thing. She left out for about an hour and came back again and said, I'm sorry it's taking so long. I got to look at one more thing. And when she finally came back about 3.30, she said, here is what's going on. Your tumor is pressing on a chiasm where your optic nerves intersect. It has pushed it up so high that we can't understand why the tumor is pushing your nerves so high, but your vision is still 20-20. She said, Mr. Anderson, you are a lucky man. I said, hold on, Dr. Schiffman. Let me get your theology straight. This ain't got nothing to do with luck. I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined his ear unto me. He took my feet out of the miry clay. Is there anybody here? No God answers prayer. Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? I know I'm standing here too long, but my soul is happy. Why don't you grab somebody, tell them he will make a way out of no way. He will pick you up. He will turn you around. I know he's all right. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the Word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021, or feel free to visit our website at www. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy.